Welcome back for part four. In this video, we're gonna cover how I modeled a few buildings in Cinema 4D, brought these into Unreal, and then used the PCG tools to quickly block out and make a system that creates my city skyline for this video. Pretty simple, pretty fast, but pretty powerful. So let's get going. Step one, Cinema 4D. I went through and made some buildings, which you can see, little tiny guy. I have short, I have mid, and I have tall, which these ones start to get a bit more unique. So a variety of these buildings, which I just exported all these out as to FBX, you can see they are all set on the world origin. Um, even though their axis may not be centered, the world origin of this whole thing is set to zero, zero. So when I export these, all these buildings are gonna come out exactly how I want them, right at the bottom, in the middle. All right, here in Unreal, just quick overview of what you're seeing. I have this city skyline that I've made, and this is just using uh, two PCG systems. Uh, the first one is this main one that you see here. It's got large or tall buildings in the center. They start to taper down to these more medium sized ones. And then as it gets to the edge of this, we have these short buildings here. And I have a second system in the middle that is the exact same thing. I just pretty much deleted the tall buildings and shuffled the distribution out between the medium and the short. So let me walk you through how I made this. It's two components. There's a blueprint with a spline in the PCG and then the PCG system itself. This way I can drag and drop this system into here and pretty much at this point, wherever I expand the spline, it's going to dynamically draw these buildings. Let's see how to do it. So click on this first system. Let's open up this blueprint. And there are two things in here to create in order to do this. Pretty simple. First one is a spline. So you can go up to add, type in spline, make that. Great. And really the only thing you need to add to this, uh, you can distribute your points that you want. Um, I'll show you the way that I actually made this. Then I'll delete it. So usually it starts out like this. You've got these two points. I deleted this first one. And then this right one, if you right click on the point, and you should see spline generation panel should pop up oftentimes in really weird spots yeah i swear these things always play peekaboo if you saw that you have a better eye than i do so it's tucked down here doing whatever but i'm just going to click circle and this will just generate a circle for you a uh, number of points three that's great. We're gonna see if there's actually a fourth one in here, but um, we can exit this out now. So now if you click onto these points, yeah, there's actually a fourth one. So something to keep in mind, there's two that overlap on the bottom. Really couldn't tell you why that is, but I spread all of these points out. And the last thing you wanna do is just make sure that this is closed. So go over here on the right, closed loop. Now, if you check off, now you have this closed circle. I'll delete this because I've already made my main one. And you guessed it for the second part. Type in PCG into here. And if this isn't showing up, you can't create any PCG stuff, whatever. Um, you just need to make sure to go into your plugin, into your plugins. If you type in procedural content, for, all these PCG things, just check them on, restart really quick, and you'll be good to go. So to make sure this capped off, just to recap, we've got our spline and this PCG volume. So this by default is set to none. I went in and just crashed after the crash. So I've added in this PCG, um, comes in empty, but I've gone ahead and preloaded the, um, the PCG that I have. If you haven't gone ahead and made a PCG setup already, you can do it this way. Assuming it's all enabled, you come down here into PCG and there's only one option to pick from. Click that, you're in business. So I'm gonna open up the first one that I've made. This felt intimidating the first time I looked at it. It's actually really simple and intuitive once I got into it, really like this stuff. But keep going off of this. The first thing I'm adding to this is this get spline data. This is just going to say, hey, whatever spline we're using, get that one. So because we are referencing this PCG volume or any of these PCGs 
inside of our blueprint, it's gonna reference this spline that we've made, which is the one we're gonna make out in our viewport. Super handy. Next node, spline sampler. This is going to give us all of our clones, our points, and all this stuff that we want to kind of start to control this. So with this, uh, for dimension, usually by default it's on spline. We don't want to draw these on the spline. Unless you do, then you're in luck. So I went down to did on interior. Interior sample spacing. This is the one that I played with. It starts at 100, which is pretty tight because these buildings are made close enough to real size. So I spaced them way out. I just cranked it way up and that worked. And the last thing that I did was this interior density fall off. I started with this first point at time zero value of one and it's gonna go all the way down to time one value of zero. Uh, this is going to give me a linear fall off. You can add easing to this if you wanted to custom control it, but it gives me a value of uh, the center out to the outside where the spline is. And the step after that is where these density filters come in. So for the tall buildings, the lower bound and the upper bound. So this upper bound is one. And what I just showed you here, anything that's at one is in the dead center of the shape and anything that's at zero is out at the spline. So the way I'm reading this is we're gonna have these clone points starting at the center and we're gonna go to about halfway the distance to the outside of that spline. This is great because you can just expand the spline all you want and it's going to react. The next step after this is attribute noise. So this attribute noise node uh, pretty much takes the selection that you've got. So this 50% from this density filter, and then it's going to just apply a random generation pattern to this. So it pretty much gives you noise and a random pattern that you're using on your density filter. So this is gonna give us the black and white values that we're sampling per point, but more in a random pattern, which is great. And then this further density filter this is also the same thing here, but now we're gonna filter out even further on this noise. After this, transform points. I added some random movement to the X and Y axis just to kind of shift these buildings a bit. And I also did a scale min and scale max. So these buildings actually kind of stretch and shrink on the Z axis just a little bit to give it some variation, but not so much to the point that you're actually going to notice it. And the last one that's the most important on this is the static mesh spawner. So didn't really need to do anything else other than under mesh entries. If you twirl these down, you can go and see, I just made an entry for every building that I wanted to use on this chain. So this building tall, I went and made six versions of this, and that's all of my tall buildings. So to kind of demonstrate this, if I unplug the medium and the short ones, these are all the tall buildings kind of being randomly generated in here and if I wanted to shrink these down and apply different values to these now you can start to see where some of these scale values and stuff comes into play and really at this point I did the exact same thing for the medium and the tall buildings so if I kind of work my way back I have medium buildings loaded into all my mesh entries transform points pretty much the same I didn't change anything on that this density filter is the main one. So we had 0.6 to one, that's what I used for the tall, and then zero to 0.6, so the opposite end of that range that's sampling is gonna do medium buildings. So center to mid, tall buildings, and then medium buildings trickle out from there. And I made sure that these noise values were exactly the same just by duplicating them. So there's not any weird overlap because the noise has changed. It's the exact same one that we're filtering through. And that's pretty much it for this whole thing. You just kind of can keep stacking stuff up and just making sure you get the buildings where you want. And when this is all said and done, really simple skyline that you can play with. And I just adjusted these spline points to taste to get these to align with the track that I wanted. And that's it, uh, skyline in a nutshell. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful. As always, please leave comments below. Let us know what you thought of this, uh, if there's anything you'd like to see. And as always, thank you.